in danger of being destroyed by man-made CO2, uh, but one man thinks he has the solution to save the planet by using engineering, not science. He thinks we can avoid the end of the world by storing CO2 under sea and land. The man is Professor Carl Ross from the University of Portsmouth. Professor, good morning, sir. Oh, good morning to you, my friend. This is excellent news. Uh, finally, we've got a cure for uh, the CO2 emissions. Um, Right now, we're, we're, we're overheating the world, despite the cold, we're overheating the world. We've got to do something quickly uh, uh, and effectively. This sounds to me, what you're suggesting, as the way ahead. Tell, tell the listeners a bit more, Cal. Yeah, what it is is that some 50% of the CO2 in the atmosphere is absorbed by the oceans, near the ocean surfaces. And what, I'm, what I suggest is that if this uh, CO2 turns into carbonates, bicarbonates, and carbonic acid. Now, what I suggest is that if we have nuclear-powered ships, they could retrieve the CO2 from the surface water of the oceans, and then they could freeze it into dry ice, carbon dioxide torpedoes, streamlined torpedoes. These can be thrown overboard. They will sink to the bottom of the ocean. When they reach, when they reach a, a depth of about 250 meters, they will freeze into carbon uh, dioxide hydrates. Now what you've got to realize is that the freezing point of liquids is not only dependent on the temperature, but also on the pressure. If the pressure goes up, the freezing point and the boiling point go up. If the pressure goes down, the freezing point and the boiling point go down. Now, um, this is one of the reasons why you can't make a good cup of tea at the top of Mount Everest, because the top of Mount Everest, the pressure, is only a third of the atmospheric pressure at sea level. I was... Funny enough, I was saying that the other day, Professor. I, I, that, that was one of those facts that landed my head somewhere years ago. Now, um, what really intrigues me, because I'm a bloke, I love the idea of CO2 torpedoes. W would we have to fire them into the ground, did you say? No, no. We, if we release the CO2 torpedoes in a deep enough water, they will... The, the density is... I forgot to say this. The density of the, CO, the frozen CO2 is 1.56 the density of water. So they will automatically sink like a sunken ship. But because they're streamlined, they should gather speed. And uh, if, they, if it's deep enough, they could hit the, 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 uh, the ocean bottoms at a speed of about 5 knots, 10 knots, maybe 15 knots. And then they'll penetrate the ocean bottoms. And then they will remain frozen there for, for millions of years. Now, as I said right at the start, this sounds like something that could be done fairly quickly. But... Can it be, have we got the technology to do it right now? Yeah, we have. We have got the technology. We can do it. There's no problem in doing it. It's, uh, uh, it's just a case of somebody uh, uh, financing it, that's all. And the whole world's got to be involved, certainly the Western world, because it needs to be about ships, because if you use ordinary ships, you'll be producing as much CO2 as you're getting rid of. So if you use nuclear powered ships, you won't be producing CO2. I, I, right, um, I, I think we need to get this going uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, can you put some kind of financial um, idea, if Britain were just to launch their own CO2 torpedo um, technique and all that, how much money are we looking at, Professor? Well, if you have one, uh, one um, nuclear powered ship, which uh, with all the required uh, uh, instrumentation on it, it probably cost about... Uh, um, maybe half a billion pounds. I'll put that down. Uh, Professor, thank you very much. Professor Carl Ross there from the University of Portsmouth.